to look at the US involvement in the British Caribbean. Yes, our very own, the British Caribbean, 1939 to 1962. US involvement in the British Caribbean. Um, so let us look at the British Caribbean countries, our territories. At this time, the reason why we call them British Caribbean because they were still colonies of Britain. They got independence in 1962, after 1962. So some British Caribbean territories, Belize, uh, before they got independence, they were called British Honduras. When they got independence, they changed their name to Belize. You have Ghana. After, before the independence, they were British Ghana. After independence, they changed the name to Ghana. Then you have Trinidad and Tobago, Barbados, Grenada, St. Lucia, Dominique, no, St. Grenada, St. Vincent. After St. Vincent is St. Lucia, which is here. Then you have Antigua, and Bar Antigua Barbuda, Anguilla, Montserrat, which is up here. And our very own Jamaica, the Cayman Islands, the Bahamas, and the Turks and Caicos Islands, right? So these are territories that were controlled or owned by the British country. Most of these countries received their independence after 1962. Some countries still remain uh, territories of Britain. They are still colonies. Places like the Cayman Islands and the Turks and Caicos, Montserrat and the British Virgin Islands are all still colonies of Britain. All right. So how did the US uh, get involved in the in the British in the British Caribbean? Obviously. Because Britain was still in control of these territories and Britain were basically, you know, still bad. America's not, Britain really don't afraid of the US. But so the US could not really come in to take over these territories, uh, the British Caribbean territories. But because these, Spain was politically weak, uh, they were able to take over the Spanish territory. So notice most of the countries that they would have had some stronghold over are the countries that were Spanish and Haiti because they were, uh, they really didn't have a very strong government system there. And the French territories are still remain places like Guadeloupe, which is right here, Martinique, yes, Guadeloupe and Martinique here and French Guiana, which is right here. So, no, this is true now, and then French Guiana is over the other side. So this is basically the US, uh, the British Caribbean territories are the British West Indies. Now, the British, Caribbean the British Caribbean territories, which we also call the British West Indies, uh, the United States got very involved in these territories and notice the word I said, very involved in these territories after or before World War II or during World War II. All right? And World War II was between 1939 and 1942. So they got involved during World War II why? Because the United States would have entered the war between Britain and Germany, right? So Britain and Germany, they fought very bit, bitter battles during the 1930s into the 1940s, and the United States uh, entered the war, helped them uh, to win that war, and as a result of that, the U.S. is going to get involved in the British Caribbean territories. So why the U.S. is going to get involved, right? 
Now, the Battle of the Caribbean, which refers to a naval campaign rage during World War II, that was part of the Battle of the Atlantic. So during the, uh, World War II, what is going to happen is that Germany is going to attempt to attempt to uh, take over some of the British Caribbean countries. In fact, Germany not only wanted Haiti and the Dominican Republic, which they had a very strong influence here, and that's how the US got involved here. But once Britain and Germany started to fight in, 19, in 1939, Germany is going to attempt to come into the Caribbean to attack the British Caribbean territories. And if they attack them, then they are able to take them over as spoils for war. And so US would never accept Germany to come into the Caribbean to take over these territories. And so this was referred to as the Battle of the Caribbean, where German used submarine boats and tried to infiltrate the Caribbean. So, so that is one of the first reasons why the US is going to get involved in it because of threat for Germany. Same thing with Haiti. Same thing with the Dominican Republic. You are getting involved because of threat. German is threatening them. Why they are threatened by Germany is because this little place, this big place right here, the Panama Canal, uh, transport uh, quite a lot of US goods and ships to all over the world. And you can't allow a foreign territory, especially if Germany should take control over Jamaica. That is going to pose a lot of problem. In fact, Germany would have been so superior. All of us today would be speaking German if that was the case. All right. So the British received help from the United States to defeat Germany. But before the US uh, helped Britain, because Britain was losing the war during World War II. It, had it not been for the US who actually entered World War II, uh, Germ uh, Britain would have been completely destroyed. And so Britain sold us out in the British Caribbean. So Britain, the US said, all right, you want us to help you in World War II. We know that Germany is beating you left, right, and center. Uh, the only way really uh, for you to win the war is if you sign this document. And this document was called the Atlantic Charter. So these were the, the, the terms or the provisions. Terms are the provisions of the Atlantic Charter. One, Britain is going to give them 50, US is going to give Britain 50 destroyer ships, old destroyer, not new ships, old. And in return, Britain must give the United States permission to build military bases in the British Caribbean. So you see, because Germany is coming to attack, we need military base, uh, we need some military base here, here, right across here, here, here. We need military bases across the Caribbean because only way, US, Britain is not able to protect her British colonies because she's fighting war there, but we, the United States, which is right here, we are able to send soldiers here to protect these ter British colonies from Germany by establishing military bases. And so Britain is going to give the United States the opportunity 
to establish bases, military bases in the British Caribbean, right? They were, uh, they were primarily called naval bases. And most of these bases were leased for 99 years. So this is an example of an old destroyer ship, one of the old destroyer ship that was given. So Britain sold us out for, for 50 old ships and for the US to give them military support to fight against Germany during the 1930s and 1940s. Now they would have established several bases in the Caribbean. They established bases in Jamaica, which is right here. Uh, the Bahamas, they established base, well, they established a base in British Guyana, Bermuda, Antigua, St. Lucia, Trinidad, and Trinidad. So these were the different places that they would have established bases, right? Military bases. So by the 1930s, during the war, the US military was actually in all the British Caribbean territories. All of them, the established naval bases. In Jamaica, the naval base was, you know where Carindon is? Burnham Field? No, sir. Hello? No, sir. Nobody know Burnham Field in Carindon? Where they have the, where they, Cars go and race? No, sir. No, no, sir. All right. So, so that is where the base was in Jamaica. Goat Island was also another part, an island of the coast of Jamaica. In Trinidad, it was Shagaramas, where the base was located. Now, negative effects of the US presence at the bases. So US is coming in and they are going to establish bases in the Caribbean, right? Let us hear from you. What do you think are some of the negative effects that will happen once American soldiers get here? It's the same all sure. over. Them take over the police force? Well, not really. Not really. Not really. They would have an influence on the police force, but not take over. I remember the place is still run by Britain. So one person said discrimination, yes. What else? Go ahead for me, Hemings. Sir, could it be like somewhat of a level of tyranny because it's been very common for the US to be very dominating and feeling as if they're the superior to everyone else? Yes, that is true. That is one. Go ahead for me, Bartley. Uh, sir, could it be like a um, power struggle? Why well, I said this is because the U.S. is, you know, like how the U.S. can be sometimes a little bit too much, and they'll be like, oh, since it's we giving you stuff, we're not for kind of listen to me. You know them little way there, sir? Yes, that was one of the issues. That was one of the issues. Any other issue? Negative effects of the U.S. presence? So let us look at places. As I said, the US is very domineering and there's discrimination. Out of the blues, there's this nice little area. Anybody know Trinidad? Know that Trinidad does well. I shouldn't say this on tape. <laughs> what may I go say? It? Trinidad uh, doesn't have nice beaches, right? And Trinidad have one of the one of their best uh, beaches was in Shagarama. So this is a picture of the area. And so when the US is going to choose the best lands 
where they establish the bases. Not so in Jamaica, because our best land in Jamaica is they're on the north coast. Our best beaches are on the north coast, not on the south coast. Uh, however, it was a lot of land uh, that they are going to take over. Shagaramas, in fact, when they took over, when they established the base in Shagaramas in Trinidad, note the word Shagaramas in Trinidad, a place in Trinidad, Shagaramas, where the U.S. established a base there, they are going to close the beach from the public. So that was one of the negative effects, which is a form of, which is going to be discrimination. So they chose the best land and then they are going to restrict or stop the citizens in the territories from going to the beach. Problem. Go ahead, Pamela Barclay. Sir, question. Isn't there somewhere in history where there's a treaty of Chagaramas? Yes, the treaty of Chagaramas that established Karikoma. Oh, okay. Because the word sounds familiar. Very familiar. We're in stone, stupid. That is good. So that is one negative effect. Uh, the next is that the British government did not consult local politicians and people. So, in fact, you have Jamaica, Bar Bahamas, Barbados, well, British Guyana, Trinidad, St. Lucia, Antigua, these territories, and these territories basically had local politicians. So although they were under Britain, they were able to some extent have some form of government structure, not mass voting, but because at this time, your people could not vote in the Caribbean territories. Uh, just only if you own land, you, you were able to vote, right? Yeah, or you have money, uh, you could vote. But the local politicians in these territories, they didn't consult them, didn't, not even to say that, listen, the Americans are going to come in. How you feel about it? The citizens in the in Jamaica, the cit citizens that live in Burnham Field, get up one morning and all them sees a lot of plane and ships and then the boys who used to play on a plot of land in uh, Burnham Field, they put up fence and say you cannot play there. People who used to fish in Old Arbor, Old Arbor right at the Gold Is Goat Islands, uh, they used to go there and fish. They can't fish there anymore because a lot of U.S. soldiers, a lot of white people just come in and swarm and take over the place. And the people were not consulted. They did not consult the people. And so that was a negative effect. And anywhere U.S. go, there is discrimination and racism. So they are going to employ the very poor people, very poor and black people, ladies to come and work in uh, on the basis, yes. And people, they are going to go to the base to work because of the Yankee dollars. Everybody want to work for the US. So a lot of people are not going to want to go and work for the US because of Yankee dollars, meaning the US currency, they want US money. They want US money. So they are going to they are going to uh, what I would say right here gravitate towards working in the bases. And the next thing, anywhere you have U.S. soldiers, not only U.S. soldiers, but anywhere you have soldiers, there is pr prostitution, gambling, and drinking. These were not practices that were very popular in these were not uh, things like prostitution. We never have much prostitution in the Caribbean. Well, we always have prostitution from slavery. 
but it was not something that was outright. If you understand where I'm coming from, same thing with gambling, same thing with, we always drink, but we used to have a lot of rules when it comes to drinking. So you don't drink on the road, you don't, you, you ensure that you put your, your liquor in, in your, in paper bags, you, you don't show off by drinking. Like what you say, everybody know in Jamaica, just have liquor. Red stripe beer and a walk on the road. You're going to the parking app, which everybody have the different juice and if not juice, liquor, alcohol, drinking. That wasn't the case. You drink at home and you drink at special season. Christmas time, you have a liquor rum, but you have your rum at home, not walk on the road. And you get what I'm saying? So the US is going to bring a lot of these practices in the British Caribbean territory. In fact, one social commentary, the mighty, mighty sparrow would have uh, criticized the US involvement in Trinidad and Tobago, right? They were very critical on the song. You can listen to this song when you're home about Jean and Dina. All right, so when you're up, remember when you're home, when you get time, you can listen to this song, which is a criticism of the US involvement. Now, these are some stuff uh, that I found on social media, where once you see US soldiers are here, they are going to get involved with Caribbean women. Yes, yeah, so read this for me, somebody volunteer. We hear what Kitty Lane has to say. Go ahead, I, Tommy Evans. I was born there in 1947 on the naval base. My father was stationed there. He was from West Virginia. My mother was from Trinidad. They met, fell in love, married, moved here to the States in 1948 and had eight more children. My beloved parents are both gone now. I'm sad to say they were together till the end. My mother never, ev never, never, well, never ever, I think, saw her beautiful homeland again. I hope I will before I pass. It is so, beautiful. So she was born during the time when the US occupied part of Trinidad, uh, which is Shagaramas, and her mother would have met her father who was a soldier in Trinidad, they got married, they moved to the States. Uh, the, her mother didn't return to Trinidad and that was her story. So she, she has Trinidadian roots, uh, mother is black, father is white, but that's some of the many stories that happen, not only in Trinidad, but also in Jamaica, also in, Grenada, also in Cuba, also in Haiti. Uh, Hemings, you can read this one for me. Okay, sir. Kitty, I was also born at the naval base, but in 1953. My father also met my mother and we lived there until 1967 when base was closed. He was transferred to VA. I live in the SW part of VA in Wise. I've been back several times to visit family. Please contact me on Facebook. We just want to say hi. All right, good. So these are a lot of stories that people talk about uh, the naval, about their experience or their family history that is linked to the naval base. All right. Uh, what are some of the positive effects of the US presence in territories, for example? Antigua didn't have an airport. They are going to construct an airport in Antigua uh, because they are going to settle there. They are going to build highways and bridges. They are going to give security because we don't want Germany to come in. So they are going to provide security. They are going to give us employment. Yes, a lot of employment. And they are going to give us loans, a lot of money, uh, 50 million dollars to the British Caribbean territories. And they're going to implement things like sanitation and health programs. 
So these are some of the very same things that they would, the United States would have done in other territories. All right. So this was when the United States would have uh, entered, visited Jamaica or started to establish or the US uh, soldiers were deployed to Jamaica. And look at these little, or look, these are Jamaican children. Yes, they see them face look like happy. <laughs> they're happy look like it's the first time they are seeing white people, don't. So this is another one. And these white soldiers here, sailors, they took pictures with them uh, when they were deployed there. Uh, so two major American bases were established in Jamaica. You have Vernon Field and you have the Goat Island bases. And this is the American flag that was placed on Goat Island, which is close to Old Harbor, not far from Old Harbor. All right. Once the U.S. Uh, got involved or established their bases here in the Caribbean, a lot of things are going to happen. And these are some economic things. One, you're going to have increased trade between the British Caribbean countries and the US. They always had a trade, but the trade now is going to increase. So you're going to have less European goods coming into the Caribbean. Why? Because World War II is taking place and they are not able to supply the Caribbean with goods. And so the US is going to supply some of those goods. Uh, you're going to have the deepening and the widening of trade relations. Uh, a lot of you Caribbean goods, they are going to, uh, they are going to sell those goods to the US. And so the United States, they are going to implement. So you have a lot of American goods coming in, and you know Caribbean people stay. stay. They don't consider their things as good things, you know. They consider foreign things as good. Once it is foreign, it is good. And so a lot of people are going to gravitate to buy foreign goods. Next, the US is going to say, all right, we come to Jamaica and we say, nice bauxite here. We, are good. we want some of the bauxite. They go to Trinidad, they see oil, wow. You know, long we need the oil in Trinidad and you know, long we need the bauxite in Jamaica and Ghana. So what you're going to do is that the US now is going to invest in the bauxite industry in Jamaica and Trinidad and take it over, uh, which, is, which is the company was called Alcan. And they are going to take over Trinidad's oil. Then they are going to control things like shipping, uh, banking, so a lot of US banks are going to come into the Caribbean and a lot of US insurance companies. Next, the US is going to offer the Caribbean countries loan to the US aid, which is called the US Agency of International Development. And so the US now is going to give money to construct housing schemes. So they are going to do help to build places like Tivoli Gardens, places in Central Village, uh, a community in Papien, with that Elliston Flat. All of those communities were partly funded by US aid. Another thing is that the US Peace Corps, what they are going to do is that they are going to come into the Caribbean and they are, the British Caribbean and they are going to invest in agriculture, training and development. And not to talk about this one, tourism. Most of our tourists come from the US. And so the US is going to build hotels here in the Caribbean and they are going, a lot of their people are going to visit the Caribbean uh, for tourists. For, for tourist reason. So these are some economic reasons why the United States got very, very involved in the Caribbean. What are some of the cultural effects? 
of the US involvement here. Religion is one major one. So you have US religious denominations like the Seventh-day Adventist Church, the Pentecostal Church, the Latter-day Saints, the Jeho Jehovah's Witnesses. Now, these churches would have been in Jamaica way before World War II. However, during World War II, with the United States establishing uh, churches here, not establishing the US presence here, through their bases, these churches are going to expand significantly. So for example, today, the Pentecost, the Seventh-day Adventist Church is one of the largest denominations in Jamaica. Same thing with the Pentecostal. And the Church of God is also a US-based church. Uh, you're going to see a lot of tele-evangelists, most of us, used to tell evangelists we don't go to church we stay home and we watch uh billy graham back then it was billy graham now it's td jakes joyce uh what's her name what's some of the television evangelists joyce mayo yes who austin. else gina jennings gina yes. jennings i have joel um, austin sir joel yes and so it was because of the United States involvement in the Caribbean, you're going to have a lot of these tele-evangelist programs. Uh, and a lot of Caribbean people now going to start to watch tele-evangelists or listen to them on the radio and all of these different stuff. Impact. Next. You're going to find that the U.S. is going to, we're going to get so involved in the U.S. Uh, music. So we're going to listen more to American jazz, rock and roll, uh, American gospels. We're going to get uh, a lot of our young people. Uh, once the U.S. Get, uh, enter the Caribbean, you're going to cry over Elvis Presley and Sam Crook and Michael Jackson and all of these different stuff. And not only the music the US is going to influence, but our news. Everywhere we go, every bank we go to, everywhere we go to the supermarket, when we look on the TV, what we see, not TVJ. Well, not back then they never had TVJ, they used to have JBC. Uh, you're not going to see JBC. What you're going to see is Voice of America, Good Morning America, 60 Minutes, CNN, Fox. In fact, when I was growing up, uh, we never used to have programs like, we call it, uh, we didn't have TV programs like All Angles. All Angles. We never used to have All Angles. All, what we had was 60 Minutes. We used to watch 60 Minutes American program. It used to come out Sundays about 6 o'clock. Um, we never used to have a, a Smile Jamaica or Good Morning Jamaica. The morning it was just hard talk, sir. They never have that either. <laughs> no, they didn't have that. Yeah. The Good Morning America was what we used to watch in the mornings. Every single thing that we used to watch, CNN, Fun News, CNN, Fox, everything was just American things. Everything was the US. So the US is going to influence our music, our news report, uh, our religion. We're going to have more US religion. In fact, most of us, in the Caribbean today, we are really, really, really a hundred percent North American influence. Films, the cinemas, all the cinemas coming in, you're going to find that most of them are US stuff. Even you look at yourself today, you're crazy over a lot of US things. Uh, 
uh, let us look at some recreation activities. We in the Caribbean, we used to play a lot of ring games and we tell stories. That's how children used to behave. Once the US reach, we're going to play Monopoly, checkers. Instead of people start go to cricket matches, they're going to go to basketball matches. Yes, because basketball is a US sport. Uh, we start to name our children American names, Cliff, Laura, Brad, Brittany. Yes, those are American names. Most of, let us see, we have Brittany here. A lot, Ashley. Yes, those are American names. Uh, Haley. Americans name, Jillian American names. Uh, so if you look in the classroom, you can see the US influence in how we name our children in the Caribbean. A lot of US names. Uh, food. Look at this, the US is going to influence our food. Uh, are we going to use a lot of US beers, sodas? Look, soda is something that uh, came from the US. We never used to have sodas here in the Caribbean. But the US sodas are going to infiltrate Pepsi and Coca Cola. A lot of fast foods, hamburgers, chips, hot dogs. Pizza, it replaced the yam, the banana, the flour dumpling. You prefer the American fruit. So the other day I went to country and somebody said to me that they want some fruits to make smoothie. But I said, but they have fruits here on the land. So on the land, they have the Jamaican apple, they have orange. They have jackfruit. What else they have? They have pineapple. So those are fruits that they have, right? Excuse me, sir. Go ahead. Isn't pizza um Italian based? Uh, but it is Italian based, but it was popularized and brought here by the US, like Domino's. Oh, okay, sir. Right? So it's the US who is going to popularize it and bring it here into the Caribbean. So, so we have a lot, of, we have like Burger King, Domino's, Wendy's. All of those are US companies and they are pushing those type of food on us in the region. All right? So in, in fact, when it comes to, so when I was, as I was saying that they, they have these fruits in the country, they said they want to make smoothies. Where do you want to use to make the smoothies? Strawberries, blueberries. You need to go price mark to buy strawberries and blueberries. Why are you going to buy used strawberries and blueberries? When, we ha when you have apple, pineapple, jackfruit, and mango, you know what a nice smoothie that could make? When you blend up your pine, your apple, uh, you freeze the Jamaican apple, you freeze the jackfruit, you freeze the mango, cut them up, put them in a bag, take them out and you blend it, put a little honey in it. Nothing nice like, like that smoothie, no, but they want strawberry smoothie and they need blueberries in it and all of that, right? So that's how we do it here in the Caribbean. And we're going to read a lot of American textbooks and novels like Nancy Drew and Hardy Boys, yeah. right? You. Very, very, very Those popular. Like yes. Very popular American textbooks that a lot of, they, they give Nancy to the girls and Hardy to the boys, yes? Entire child. Yes, every, every <laughs> award ceremony. <laughs> You do something good, you get a big Nancy. You get a, um, a grid light on with a bunch of. You know the gossip girl? No, not gossip girl. You know goddess girls? Girl. Girl, girl. Goddess My girls. Entire based upon Nancy Drew books, honestly. Right? Everything 
Sean, you and get an hard boys and grid blight on grid blight on like then would have like for example the lamp and the tree and other stories <laughs> yes lady Door diaries never mentioned them they must still want one and diary of a wimpy kid yes. <laughs> Still trying to call it the Goddess Girl series over here. Still trying. Girl. All right. So very good, ladies. So you can see that the U.S. influences us culturally. They influence us economically. Uh, they are going to take over some of our best lands when they establish bases. Why? Because Britain was in a problem during World War II. Couldn't fight Germany by herself. Germany was beating her left, right, and center. Beat, beat Britain softer than courage. And so guess what? She needed help. And a Britain, Britain, U.S. always wanted to get involved in the British Caribbean territories. And that's how they got involved. So that was the U.S. involvement in the Caribbean 1939 to 1962. Now, the U.S. also got involved in the Caribbean between 1962 and 1985. So this now was during the time of war, after we got our independence, or during the period where British Caribbean countries are getting their independence. Now the US, they are going to get involved in places like politically, they're going to dictate to Caribbean countries what to do, how to do it, when to do it. So once Britain left, and these territories got their independence, they are going to get involved. So Caribbean countries got their independence from Britain. Some Caribbean countries like Jamaica and Trinidad got their independence in 1962. Guyana and Barbados got their independence in 1966. Grenada got their independence in 1974. Uh, three countries that the US got involved in was Jamaica, Guyana, and Grenada. Very, very powerful. In fact, they got involved in every single Caribbean country and dictated to them what to do, how to do it, when to do it. Why did the US uh, uh, got involved in the Caribbean countries? One, countries doing after they got independence, like Jamaica, Ghana, and Grenada, they started to link with Cuba. And America didn't like that. They didn't like the fact that Jamaica, Ghana, and Grenada are building or were building relationship with Fidel Castro. And so as a result of that, the US is going to say that we cannot allow these countries to become communist countries like Cuba. So they were very, very fearful. So Chedi Jagan, who was premier of Ghana and had a very close relationship with Russia, because of Chedi Jagan's relationship with Russia, he started to talk about socialism and implementing some of the same, same socialist policies in Jamaica, in Guyana. Same thing with Forbes Burnham in Guyana uh, when he became prime minister. He started to adopt a lot of socialist reforms like Cuba. They started to trade with Cuba. They started to take over US businesses in Ghana, right? And because of that, the US is going to, the US is going to be very concerned about Ghana. Very, very concerned about Ghana. And so what they are going to do, the first thing the US is going to do with Ghana is that they are going to refuse to give Ghana aid and support. They are going to tell their tourists that, listen, it is not safe to go to Ghana. So tourists, they need to stop going to Ghana. Two, they are going to give Ghanese people who went for visa, they refuse the visa on most Ghanese people, and they're going to place an embargo on Ghana. So it's that only Cuba alone got an embargo. Guyana, after their independence, got an embargo because they would have up their relationship with Cuba. And in 1976, the US bombed a Cuban plane, killing students, medical students who were actually going to Cuba to study medicine. The bomber plane killing them, that plane landed in Barbados. Go ahead from a Barclay. 
Sir, my question is, so why are the U.S. government so surprised when there are terrorists coming back to bomb U.S.? Why are they so surprised? Why do they act so innocent, like they've never done anything wrong in their life? I don't know. It's a question that they will have to answer. Very, very important question. Let us look at, go ahead, Pammy Nelson. Sir, as Kiana asked that, sir, I saw a quote that said that the U.S. will um, invade countries and um, provoke them and cause war and will later though make the documentaries on how that country took away from them and how many soldiers were killed and stuff like that. And sir, like overall studying um, history in grade 11 brings out the fact that they have such a victim complex as well as a, a superiority complex. And it's just the most confusing thing ever because no way can you actually think that what you're doing is okay. They just think that. Go ahead. They think that they are always right. They think that they are so much better than everybody else. And they are so unoriginal in every single thing that they do. The fact that their national dish is like a hamburger or something like that. <laughs> and it's, they did not even, um, it's not indigenous to them or anything. All they do is take away from other people. That is true. So that is also, but as a reaction, so this is the policies that Ghana would have implemented, right? The socialist reform, start to trade with Cuba. They start to nationalize business. Cuba bought almost all of Ghanese, right? This is how the U.S. reacted. Always note when you are studying what happened, what was the reaction? And this is how some Ghanese re reacted. A lot of Ghanese said, listen, we are running away from our country because we don't want to be like Cuba. We hear that Cuba is terrible and it's a communist place. You don't have freedom. So a lot of Ghanaians left, a lot of professionals, a lot of teachers, and the U.S. is going to devalue the Ghanaians' currency. That's one of the reasons today why the Ghanaians' currency, because how the U.S. would have put an embargo on their economy, the value of their currency would have declined significantly. Then we come to our very own Jamaica. $1,000 US, Michael Manley, Michael Manley and Fidel Castro, Michael Manley and Fidel Castro. So Michael Manley became prime minister in 1972. He was prime minister from 1972 to 1980. His father was Norman Manley. Uh, and Norman and Michael are Jamaica College old boys. Uh, why the US got upset with Manley? One, Michael Manley started to adopt some very same policies like Cuba. So, and Michael Manley called it democratic socialism. And he spoke about self-reliance and rejected the US domination of the Jamaican economy, right? And so Michael Manley started to encourage Jamaican to eat what you grow. And the U.S. came in, sorry, Cuba, and he started to visit Cuba. And the U.S. is going to place an embargo or put some restriction on trade with Jamaica. Not only that, Michael Manley uh, developed relationship with Fidel Castro and Russia, which were actually enemies of the United States. What were some of the programs that the Michael Manley government did? The, the Michael Manley did had free education. So when Michael Manley was in power, Michael Manley government had free education from 1973 to 1980. So you don't pay money to go to school. You don't pay money to go to university. It was free education. Michael Manley built over 40,000 houses for poor people. He gave land reform. So he took away some of the land from the US that the US had control over and he gave those lands, he gave those lands to, I know, just give me four more minutes to wrap up. He gave those lands to, uh, he gave those lands to the US, to poor people, small farmers, and he built a lot of schools in Jamaica. 
So the Cubans would have built us a Marty High School and another one in Clarendon. Michael Manley came in with similar policies like maternity leave for women, scholarship for Jamaicans to study medicine. So all the students going to study medicine in Cuba today or Russia is because of Michael Manley. Adult illiteracy. So a lot of Jamaicans could not read and write. Michael Manley started to implement a lot of these programs. I don't understand how people say Manly Mash of Jamaica. However, the US is going to react to all of these. One, you're going to have trade embargo on Jamaica, well, trade restriction. The US is going to send the CIA into Jamaica. Uh, they are going to publish a lot of negative things about Jamaica. And the tourists, they are going to warn their tourists not to come to Jamaica. And so these were some of the reaction of the US. The Jamaican dollar, because Jamaica did not have access to loans, the value of the Jamaican dollar is going to decline. International aid and loans were cut off. So Jamaica couldn't get any loans from the international market. And the US is going to ensure that the JLPA they, they won the 1980 election. But on top of that, the CIA is going to come into Jamaica and they are going to give to the poor communities guns into Jamaica. And that's one of the reasons why in Jamaica today we have a lot of uh, crime because of the guns that were issued by the United States during this period, right? How Jamaicans going to react to Manly and the US, what is going on? One, a number of women, they are going to support Manly because they get maternity leave before that they could not get maternity leave. Middle class and upper class people felt that, listen, Michael Manley is going to take over our land. So a lot of middle class and upper class people, they are going to leave Jamaica. Michael, not only that, Michael Manley made it bad on himself by telling Jamaicans that there are five flights a day to Miami. So if you don't like it, go. And the rich people in Jamaica took it literally and they sold their houses in Beverly Gardens and Cherry, 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 Beverly Gardens, Cherry Gardens and Beverly Hills, and they left. And the next thing that Michael Manley did was a massive capital. A lot of money left Jamaica as a result of this. So these are how the US got involved in the British Caribbean. All right, ladies, so we'll meet tomorrow. Bye, sir. You only used three of the four minutes that you begged for. Yeah, man. These I'm currently were counting. No, but tomorrow, what we can do That's tomorrow is that tomorrow, all the questions that you have about this, we can discuss it. Okay, sir. But we have to rush because we are behind. What? Mm. Bye-bye, ladies.